Hey guys, Robin here, and welcome to another movie review. Today, I am reviewing Eugene Roy's second giant monster movie, The Giant Behemoth, from 1959. <clears throat> now, for the most part, um, Giant Behemoth, <coughs> The Giant Behemoth, known in its native England as, as Behemoth the Sea Monster, can, can be considered a loose remake <clears throat> of The Beast from, from 20,000 Fathoms, which I uploaded an unintentionally silent review of as part of Kaiju Timber. Um, <clears throat> the, the difference is, um, <clears throat> the creature is not awoken from, the creature is not woken up by an atomic bomb, at least I'm not really sure, um, I'm not sure if they mention that, but if they do, but if they do, then I forgot about it, but, but, um, but the titular behemoth does have similarities to Godzilla, in the fact that both the behemoth this year and Godzilla were mutated by atomic weapons testing, and both of them have, <clears throat> and both of them have um, um, a way that they shoot out of their mouth that burns what it touches. <clears throat> In fact, um. Um, our first victim of the behemoth is a fisherman. <clears throat> um, he, the behemoth, um, he, uh, kills people with the radiation in two, two different ways. Um, <clears throat> he either gives them enough radiation that, that they contract a very, high, very severe radiation poisoning and die shortly after. Or he blasts them with so much radiation that they're reduced to uh, shard corpses, which we see happen to no less than five people in this movie. One of them is a boy who looks no older than twelve. So, and the and the movie actually does show with his shard corpse, which is which. Which, like, which is quite gruesome and graphic for the time um, that it was made, 1959. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> and the, <clears throat> and they have to, and, uh, <clears throat> and an atomic physicist, <clears throat> um, um, Along with the military, they work together to stop the titular behemoth from from turning London ye <coughs> in from turning London into an uninhabitable radioactive wasteland. <coughs> and at first, the mil the military sim simply wants to to blow the monster up. But that plan is shot down by one of the physicist's assistants, <coughs> who says that if they uh, that if they kill the monster with explosives, it will send uh, <coughs> it will, will will send highly radioactive chunks of the monster in, into every corner uh, of London. So. <coughs> So that plan, um, so that plan is, is quickly abandoned, and they instead go with with a plan to fire 
a radioactive tor torpedo at the monster in an attempt to kill it. Now, um, the acting is um, pretty good. It's a 50s monster movie, so you're not really by that kind of a moot point. Because when you watch a 50s monster movie, you aren't watching it for the deep story or the good acting. You're just watching it to see a monster wrecking shit up. And the monster effects were done by Willis O'Brien. And this was one of the last movies that he worked on. In fact, I think it might might even be the last movie he made. Well, the last movie he did effects for, like he he was actually credited for doing the effects. So, um, and um, well, um, there's not really a lot to to say about this movie. Um, it's just basically um. It's just, it's, it's very similar to Beast from 20,000 Fathoms this year in that we have a creature that's, a prehistoric creature that's been affected by, uh, by nuclear testing and that heads toward a highly populated area and goes on a rampage. Um, um, there, 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 um, also seems to be, um, a bit of a continuity issue, <clears throat> because, um, when, when a physicist is showing a photograph of uh, the behemoth's, um, footprint in the ground to, <clears throat> to a paleontologist who, who is, is very similar <clears throat> to Thurgood Elson from 20,000 Fathoms, <clears throat> only he's in the movie, <clears throat> You're only uh, this um, version of the character is, um, is in the movie for a far shorter amount of time. <clears throat> But back to the continuity issue, um, <clears throat> he, in the photograph of the behemoth's foot, there is, <clears throat> there is a police car, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> he, and the, the footprint here is huge compared to the car, like, you could probably fit, like, like, five or ten of that cop car in it. But during the behemoth rampage, <clears throat> the monster steps on and crushes a fairly larger car, but its foot's not big enough to completely crush the car. <clears throat> like, uh, like, just take this. See? This little car here is a car the monster steps on. Okay, except uh, this uh, Zilla toy as the monster. Yeah, like this. It, it steps on the car like that, and the car gets flattened. But, but that photograph would lead you to believe that the car is that 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 the car in the picture is the size of this thumbtack here. Yeah. Yeah. So um so 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 the so the monsters seem to change size. <clears throat> and certain shots from twenty thousand fathoms are remade, such as the monster coming out of the water at the harbor and stomping around. Um <clears throat> Um there is uh, another effect where peop where the behemoth um is a uh, rampaging past Buckingham Palace, and two two guys try to escape in a car, but they can't start it. So the behemoth picks up the car, which um the behemoth itself and the damage it does, it's all animated by stop motion. 
and the stop motion is just as good as in 20,000 Fathoms, as in the Beach Final Final Final, 20,000 Fathoms. <laughs> the Behemoth, like, uh, the Behemoth takes the car. The Behemoth ha has the car <clears throat> in its mouth, <clears throat> and it takes it is head around before throwing the car into the Thames River <clears throat> and it's pretty obvious that <laughs> that they just took a toy car and just threw it in the river which is kind of funny. <clears throat> now um before I sign off um well um the the giant behemoth um well <clears throat> If you, well, um, if you've seen be some 20, 20,000 Fathoms, um, um, and you're looking for a giant monster movie that Roy made, um, um, I'd recommend Gorgo, but if you've always seen Gorgo, then I'd recommend this. This is pretty good, um, now, uh, the behemoth, um, as you can kind of tell, um, on the cover, well, on this, uh, sleeve, um, it's kind of like it's it, it's a mix of of a play plesiosaur and a brontosaurus, but the creature was originally just going to be a giant blob of radiation, but they switched it to a dinosaur because because they thought that would that would uh, draw more people in and. And that was the right call. And I believe that that was a good idea. Because, like, yeah, because a dinosaur is, is better than just a freaking blob of radiation. But, yeah, this is um, a pretty decent movie. Um, so, yeah, I do recommend this one. I do recommend this one um, as long as you're... <clears throat> Okay, with scenes of people like of, of people talking about about the monster and finding out about it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, thank you all for watching, and, I, and I'll see you all soon in the near future. Peace.